Hi, I'm Curtis Hubner with Advanced Integrated Controls. This morning I want to talk to you about the discontinued Sonos iPod dock and how we can add this unit to an existing Sonos system. Some of you may wonder why we want to do that and the reality is there are some of us out there who still have Sonos systems and our source of music may be an old iPod that somebody filled with music for us and gave us as a gift. If that is the case, that music would not be available to someone on their iPhone, iPad to stream directly through Sonos. And so they have one of two ways to play that. They can either use a mini 1-8 stereo cable to plug their iPod into maybe, let's say, a Sonos Connect as a line in, or they can use the iPod dock. Some of us have these and now they're sitting around doing nothing. And I want to show you guys that you can still use this on the new system. It's actually really, really neat. The first thing you want to do when you, get, when you have your iPod dock is factory reset it. Even though this may be already have been part of your system at one time, in order to properly add it to the new Sonos platform, we need to factory reset this device. The way you want to do that is on the back of your Sonos iPod dock, there is a button next to the power inlet that has two arrows pointing at each other. You want to press and hold that button down, continue to hold that down, and find your power cord for the Sonos dock. Plug your power cord in and continue to hold this button with the two arrows down. You are going to notice that you will get a clear LED light that starts to blink. We're going to hold this button down until that light turns amber. I typically want to wait for that amber light and when it blinks about four to five times you can release the button with the two arrows. This is now going to factory default this Sonos iPod dock so that it was the way it came out of the box. And this is really the only way that we can re-add this to the new Sonos platform that where you find we're using the Play 5s and Play 3s and Play Bars and things like that. So I'm going to sit this down while it is factory resetting and I'm going to use my iPad to airplay onto this Sony TV so that you guys can watch what I'm doing here with Sonos. Right, there we go. I'm going to go ahead and launch my Sonos app. Now if you notice, this is a typical Sonos screen here. This should look basically what you guys are already working with, so there's nothing new here for you. Um, but what I want to do now, now that this is factory resetting, I want to go and add this as a device on my new Sonos system. The way to do that is you're going to go into settings, which is the bottom icon on your main menu. And if you notice, we have choices to add a player or sub. We can also add a booster bridge, and then we get all these other choices. What you don't see is where you can add an iPod dock. Um, and here at Advanced Integrated Controls, we kind of ran into this accidentally trying to figure out a way to make these work still. And when we did, we were really excited. And so that's why we want to share it with you guys today. So this is really easy. What you want to do is you want to go into the second from the top, add a booster bridge, and select that choice. Now if you notice it gave us a little pop-up menu that asked us if we were wiring to the router or if we were going to use somewhere else. This Sonos dock is not a wired device, so we're going to go ahead and choose use somewhere else. Once we do that, it lets us know that we need to connect our boost or bridge into an outlet. We're not using a booster bridge, obviously, so they are talking about the dock for what we are doing. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. If you notice now, it's asking me to make sure that our boost bridge, what we're using is our iPod dock, has now has a blinking green light. And by this time, once we've made it through this menu, you will notice there is a blinking green light next to that clear LED light that is on the back of the iPod dock. So we are ready to go with that, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. This is now trying to locate this device, and we're going to be able to configure it from here. If you notice, it's asking me about a boost setup now, and it's letting me know if I had a boost to go ahead and press that red button that looks like an infinity symbol. We're not gonna use it as a boost, and so we're gonna choose I'm adding a bridge for what we are doing today. So I will select add a bridge, 
If you notice now, it's letting me know that on the back of my bridge, I have a button that has two arrows pointing at each other. This is the same button we used to factory default this iPod when we started. So we simply need to take the back of your Sonos iPod dock, press that button firmly, and we are going to wait. At this point, if you notice, my screen has changed and I get a menu that says dock confirmation to add a Sonos dock and we can go on. So it has now recognized that this is a Sonos dock even though that wasn't originally one of our choices. I can now choose I'm adding a dock and it is connecting to this unit now to let me do that. And so at this point you can see that this has told me it has added a dock and that the Sonos dock has now been added to my system. And I can hit next and I can choose what room this is going to be. For the sake of what we're doing today, I'm going to go ahead and choose living room and then choose next. And it's letting me know that this will appear on my music menu from now on. And I will hit next and then we can choose done. Okay. This is now, Sonos is now giving me a menu telling me I need an update. The reason for that is because we factory defaulted this iPod dock and at this point it needs to update itself to have the latest firmware that's out there so that it is compatible with our newest Sonos system. So I'm going to go ahead and choose check for updates and it is telling me there is an update for this device and I will go ahead and update now. This typically doesn't take very long. Um, if you have internet speeds that are ranging anywhere from 5 to 30 meg, this should take you about a minute. Um, if you're running slower than that, it could take a couple of minutes to finish this, but realistically, it doesn't take very long to get this update done. While this is updating, I have an old Generation 1 iPod Touch. This is some type of device that you guys may have out there that has a ton of music on it, but really doesn't have an iTunes account associated with you for that music. And so that is why we may want to use an iPod, one of the old iPod docks. Keep in mind, whatever device we're talking about on these iPods, it is going to have to have the old generation dock connector port. It won't have the new uh, connection that you would see on the new iPhone 5, 6s, and so forth. Our Sonos players are restarting at this point. The update looks like it's finished. It's telling me it's complete and I can hit next. This is going into the new True Play stuff, and since we're not really talking about this morning, I'm going to skip that. Perfect. And now I'm going to hit Done in the top right corner of my Sonos menu to get out of the main. Now if you notice from the main menu of Sonos, one of my music sources is Docked iPods. I'm going to go ahead and take this um, iPod Touch, and I'm going to dock it into the Sonos player. And then I'm going to go to my GUI on my iPad, my iPhone, whatever device you guys want to use. And if I choose Dock iPods, I start to see that it has recognized this iPod. I'm going to choose that iPod. I can play now or I can browse music. I'm going to go into my music browse. And if you notice, I get a full lineup of artists, albums, tracks, and so forth. Um, I can pick any of these songs I want to play. And now your old iPod that may be full of music that somebody gave you will be able to work on the new Sonos system. Um, that's about it, guys. I'm glad I could help you. Have a great day.